But I think part of that too is, um, you know, I was saying my dad and my grandfather are both writers and uh, my grandfather wrote for a newspaper, the Washington Post, back when the paper had to go to bed at a certain time, which means it would get laid out to be printed for the next morning. Um, and my dad uh, is a retired television news reporter and same thing where the news comes on at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., depending which segment of the news you're doing. And there's no like pushing your date back or having writer's block for either of them. I grew up with those examples of, you know, the news comes on at five, so you better have something to say. And I think that really informed um, my feelings about writer's block. Obviously, there are days where the writing that I do is not anything I want published, but I feel like I'm able to always get something out because I'm thinking of it sort of in the in the newsroom kind of style or the show must go on or any of those things that informed my creative style. Well, I'm curious, um, with your uh, grandfather being a very well-known writer and then your father a writer also, is there a sense when you're acting of rebellion that, no, I don't want to go into the family business? Um, absolutely, yes. I think there was, in my mind, almost a foregone conclusion that I would find my way to writing eventually. Um, because I knew, I always knew that was something I wanted to do and it didn't feel like it had the same kind of time urgency. I had a sense that becoming an actor or that working as an actor was something that I needed to get out of my system and do when I was young. Which of course, part of that is our patriarchal society that says people are more attractive when they're young, which is a whole other problem and we can get into that, but I, I think your esteemed audience gets it. Um, so that was part of it, but also the part of it was I knew from being a child actor that there was sort of an expiration point for the way that I wanted to do it. I'd watched enough adults do it and need to leave the kind of theater that I had done either to get a job with more um, stability or better benefits or to have a family and be able to choose different working hours. Or I'd sort of seen enough adults come and go that I knew it wasn't something I wanted to do forever. So I felt like acting was a very temporary thing. I wanted to give it a shot. I knew writing would be there and I knew that writing didn't have that same kind of constraint. Um, and I think also just writing to me feels you know i've had a lot of people say like oh it must be nice to be a writer you're more behind the scenes nobody's looking at you the attention isn't on you the same way physically you could stay in your pajamas all day those kinds of things and that's absolutely true but at the same time being a writer is a different kind of you know being naked in front of people metaphorically you are bearing your soul and your ideas in a different way that being an actor to me always felt very comfortable because you're dressed up you're saying somebody else's words most of the time you're in a costume sometimes you're putting on an accent there's there's no part of it that's you whereas to me being a writer feels incredibly incredibly personal so i do think that delaying the start of my writing career was maybe not so much a rebellion but a little bit of a of a, I knew what was going to be involved and was a little bit scared of it because I knew how um, how personal it was going to be for me. And I think I put that off until I really was ready to to go there. Well, I imagine that uh, once you're done with the point of rebellion, there's also an incredible amount of pressure. Your, your grandfather's an incredibly well-known writer. Uh, you've got you know big shoes to to fill when you're when you're coming to the writing game. Yeah, I think that's it too. But also, um, you know, I think I realized a couple years, you know, I think of my acting career as having two very distinct chapters with college in the middle. And when I did it as a kid, it was purely for fun. Um, I was not supporting my family financially or nor was I, you know, trying to build any particular kind of career. I was doing it because I loved it. Like I really just legitimately loved singing and dancing and being on stage. When I when I sort of, you know, took a break and went to college and then moved to New York to become an adult actor, it felt incredibly different to me and the pressure to make a living, to shape a career, to have longevity, to make connections, all of that stuff, you know, 
really took the fun out of it for me. And it felt incredibly different than having done it as a child. Whereas I think had I come to it initially as an adult, I may not have had that perspective. I may not have um, saw the ways in which it was lacking compared to having done it as a child. And I think that really affected me. And I kept waiting for that feeling to go away and it didn't. And it just, I got to the point where I felt like, you know, this isn't fun anymore. This isn't it's not just for the joy. And um, it wasn't, I mean, nothing as an adult is ever quite how you imagine it as a kid, but it certainly, it was different enough that I felt like it wasn't, I was in it for the wrong reasons. I was doing it because it was a habit and I was sort of chasing the experience I'd had as a kid, not realizing that when you do something as an adult and you're trying to make a career out of it, it's going to have a very different tenor emotionally. And for me, that juxtaposition was enough to like zap the fun out of it. And really, um, I was not able to kind of reset my framework around it. When you were a kid, did you have the um, awareness that, oh, I'm, I'm at the Clinton White House in, in 1996. This is a special moment. This is something that, that other kids aren't, aren't going to have, or was it just this is another? No. Um, no, and that's one of the beautiful and terrible things about having really cool experiences as a young child is that you lack perspective, which is the only thing that makes it all possible. Because I think if I knew the the magnitude of some of the stuff I was doing, I would have been terrified. So in some ways it was my saving grace, but in other ways, I think um, I think I thought my life would just always be like that. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm singing at the White House tomorrow and the next week I've got this governor election. And then like in January we're doing, you know, I was very fortunate that my life was full of these like crazy, fascinating experiences. And I definitely, um, you know, I think it goes both ways. I also didn't understand that that there was anything bigger and more out there. I, I think I was really focused. You know, this was before the Internet, before social media, I was very happily focused sort of in my lane, feeling like my life and my experiences were fantastic and amazing and all I could ever want. And I didn't really look to this to either side of it um, and felt, you know, just really comfortable and happy and satisfied where I am. And I feel for kids and teenagers and adults today where I think there's so much comparison culture obviously because of social media and there's so much opportunity to feel not enough or too much or whatever it is. And um, I, I think I was just completely blissfully unaware. You know, my sister was also a child actor and she did some opera stuff at the Kennedy Center with the Washington Opera. And then I auditioned for the next one and they offered me a part. But at the same time, I got offered a different part and I took that. And, you know, there were all of these, there was an opportunity to go on tour with Les Mis at one point. And my mom said, do you want to do that? And I was like, no, I just, I think I want to stay and do second grade. You know, I just kind of want to stay home. I didn't want to go there. You know, I just had no concept and also, yeah, like turned down the Washington Opera at the Kennedy Center because I had, you know, the chance to do a, a play at school that I really wanted to do. And so I was lucky in that way that I didn't have the perspective to be like, oh, no, the Washington Opera is going to look way better on your resume. You should really do that one. My parents really let me lead in the best way. And I think I made the choices that normal seven and eight year olds would make without context because I didn't know any better. And in that way, it, you know, it remained full of joy. And I think that's what I was talking about, about becoming an adult actor. You don't have the luxury to take the fun choice. You take the Kennedy Center because that's the more prestigious job and it's going to look better on your resume and it's going to lead to all these other things. And for me, then that by the time I was, you know, in that situation, I was like, oh, this is just not bringing me the same kind of joy to be able to be like, no, I want to do community theater because it's a much better, you know, like I know, I know Joe and he's in that show and we're going to have fun together. So it's just a different vibe. I am fascinated. These are, these are big time opportunities uh, that we're <laughs> talking about. And your parents are still saying, no, no, writing, that's that's the, the safe choice. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I guess it's all just, again, it's perspective. It's whatever you come from, you know, because that was, you know, that was the way that my family was supported. And that was the way that my dad's family was supported. You know, it just seems normal. It's as if, if my dad and my grandfather had all been doctors, you know, I'm sure I might have 
felt tempted to go into that. It's it's what's familiar and the people around you, you know, are all in that field and it as a result becomes very attainably attainable seeming.